in Asia and in Europe. Uh, I wanted to take a day uh, to come to you to uh, talk about one of the generals. Uh, most of the time, uh, you'll read my books, God's Generals, or you'll hear me talk about them in a service, or you'll get the DVD set. But I thought I'd just take a moment and, and share some things with you. I mean, I've studied about 500 different ministers in my life, and, and I love doing it. My call is uh, engulfing that, and I'm always surprised when the God Journals books are still number one after 25 years. I've written them, and they're still going around, well, especially the first one. But I want to talk about today a man named John Alexander Dowie. He's one of the great Pentecostal heroes, or I should say healing heroes, because he predates Pentecost, and he really wasn't a Pentecostal, but he trained over... I guess about a hundred and some ministers that was in Zion, Illinois, a city that he built in the healing ministry that joined the Pentecostal movement uh, at the early part of the 1900s. The story of Dowie, he is from Scotland, so all you that are from the UK, here comes one of the great generals out of the UK, out of Scotland. I think there is John Knox and there's John Alexander Dowie, he was born in Scotland. He uh, went to Australia for a while, and then when he got time to go to the university, he went back to uh, England, or I should say Scotland, to go to the University of Edinburgh. And he took two subjects. Can you guess what they were? The first one was he took politics. He took uh, His first major was in government, and his second major in college was theology. So to me, it kind of showed you the beginning of an apostolic call, governmental desire, governmental uh, liking, and a theology. So that, to me, was a sign of that apostolic call in his life was already moving and going forward. While he was at the university there, he was so good in his classes that they made him the chaplain of the school infirmary, which gave him access to all the the medical lectures, and he'd go into the big uh, room when they would do the uh, surgeries, and all the students would watch. Have you ever seen the picture where the doctor and the surgeon and the patient are down here, and the room is all round like that, and they're all sitting, they all look? Well, Dowie was able to go into that. So he would sit there, and he would watch the operations and be in the lectures, and then he had access to the patients after the operation, and he saw that it wasn't very good. So that formed later in his life, this Pentecostal doctrine that sometimes you'll still meet today. That if you believe God for healing, you don't obey the doctors and you don't take your medicine. Because Dowie was the one that started that in the Pentecostal movement. He influenced the Pentecostal preachers to preach that if you want divine healing, don't go to the doctor, don't take your medicine, just trust God and get a miracle. Well, where that came from, it came from Dowie's scene, and he would write in his journal that medicine was an inexact science. Now, I think if he lived today, he would have a different opinion. But in the late 1800s and early 1900s, medical science was more butchery than it was assistance. So Dowie, seeing this, said, stop this. It is harming the people. It's not helping. So come and trust God. Let me pray for you. So I wanted to talk about it just for a moment, where that preaching came from, where that thought came from, that you find in some Pentecostal circles, especially in the beginning of the movement, if you believe in healing, don't take your medicine, don't go to the doctor. Years ago, I was driving John G. Lake's daughter from Kenneth Hagin's office to Oral Roberts' office in Tulsa. So I had about, what, 10 miles or so to go from Broken Arrow to Tulsa. So I had uh, her and her husband, Wilford Wright, and Gertrude was her name, in the car. So I was talking to her and, and, and asking all the John G. Lake questions. And so I built a good friendship with her. Then she died. She died of a small little medical procedure she could have gotten by walking into a doctor's office and walking out. But she would not go to the doctor because Danny had told her, trust God and get healed. So what's the problem here? The problem is she had daddy's doctrine but not daddy's faith. And sometimes when we get into this world, medicine does not undermine divine healing. Doctors and divine healing can work together. That's where Oral Roberts was wonderful in combining prayer and medicine together. Have you ever seen the, the praying hands that was out from the hospital, now it's out from the university? One was the, the healing prayer hand and the doctor's hand coming together to form the prayer sign. And so all put it together. So Dowie was that guy. I just wanted to mention this today to give you a little bit of things I don't get to say when I'm teaching it. That's where that statement came from. 
It's been misused. It's now been used to make fun of divine healing. So let's combine prayer and medicine. I say it like this. Medicine has kept you alive long enough not to need it anymore. Medicine's kept some people alive while they build their faith when they don't need it anymore. Hope all that makes sense. But now he's one of those guys that was a pioneer of divine healing in the late 1800s, early 1900s. He built a city called Zion, still there today, 40 miles north of Chicago. Why don't you know his name? I was the guy that made him famous again. I dug him up out of the ground and brought him back because I thought he deserved to be honored. The reason why we don't know his name as much as we should is because he died believing he was Elijah. He died with error in his belief. It's a sad story. But all the years before that, good man. Abraham Lincoln's niece would go there and get healed by the prayers of John Hudson and Dowie. Lillian Yeomans became an early Pentecostal preacher. She was a medical doctor that had got addicted to morphine and could not get off of it. Went to Zion. Dowie prayed for her. She was healed and turned her life around and became a great Pentecostal healing preacher. Dowie built a city. And in that city, F.F. F. Bosworth and John G. Lake went there, became citizens of Zion. Lake was a member of the Board of Elders in his church. Bosworth played in the band on the, on the, on the, in the church, and they learned healing there. Gordon Lindsay's parents moved there, and he was born there, and Dowie dedicated Gordon Lindsay to the Lord in Zion. So there's a lot of things that happen. So no matter how bad things may be, learn how to sort. Take the good, learn from the bad, just don't repeat the bad, repeat the good stuff. So I hope that makes a little sense to you, that uh, how Dowie helped bring that doctor around, why it was good for the time, how it kept being parroted, because we don't know why we say what we say, investigate it and change it. Amen? So I just want to mention to you again one more time this week that we have a special going on of all of our journal books for God Journals for Kids and Dowie's one of the stories. And we got Daddy Seymour, we got Charles Parham, Amy Sam McPherson, and Catherine Kuhlman. So let your kids read about the great heroes of the faith. Maybe they'll become one in the next generation. So if you want those books, call our office or go to our website and get it in. Keep moving God for healing. Pray for the sick and don't let that message die out. Just fine-tune it and make it better, okay? See you next time. God bless.